Ladies and gentlemen, I like a fighter. I like somebody who fights. God bless Bernie Sanders. He's a good human being. I have nothing bad to say about... I don't want to say that... I don't want to disparage him. The only thing I can say about Bernie Sanders is that he doesn't fight. He's not a fighter. Bloomberg and Steyer, two billionaires, were there because they're not afraid of Bernie. He was cheated in Iowa. Pete Buttigieg won. Or about to win. Or even if, let's just say, Pete Buttigieg won. But let's just say Bernie were to win. He didn't get that moment. They cheated him of that moment. They cheated him of a victory. So if he gets like one delegate more, oh, he won the Iowa caucus. Like 10 days later, they find you find out because the app that was linked to Clinton's uh Clinton officials or Clinton uh, campaign people. And then Clinton, as Bernie's being cheated in Iowa, tweets out, yeah, um, go ahead and register to vote. <laughs> you, you have to understand, people, okay, Mitt Romney, we'll get to that in a second. President Trump called Mitt Romney a Democratic operative, okay? Um, he's more of a Democratic operative, then, like, like Clinton said that Tulsi Gabbard is a Russian operative, that whole thing is a hoax and a myth. Clinton lost because she was unelectable. I read NPR quoted me and 538, and I said Clinton was unelectable. They said Trump wouldn't even be GOP nominee. Clinton is still unelectable. Hillary Clinton will become the Democratic nominee in 2020. Does this make sense? No. But it's not rational to think that it would make sense. It is irrational to think any of this should make sense. Anyway, my point is this. Bernie was cheated in Iowa. Bernie was cheated in 2016. Bernie should have had, he should have done exactly what Pete Buttigieg did. How does this relate to Mitt Romney and Trump calling him a Democratic operative and saying, hey, you wanted to um, be my Secretary of State? And by the way, it's true, President Trump did endorse Mitt Romney in Utah. So how does this all relate Okay, Trump is a fighter. He fights back. He's going after Mitt Romney now because Mitt Romney voted on one of the articles of Shampeachment to convict Trump of nothing. He, it's not even a crime. Democrats made this whole big deal for like three months and three years. They didn't even include anything to do with nothing. They included nothing to do with the Mueller probe or the Mueller report. So the whole thing's like the biggest scam of all time. They said, oh, he worked with Russia. Nothing. They said 30-plus indictments, Trump Jr. meeting, treasonous. All, no, they didn't include any of it within the articles of impeachment. Why didn't they include three years of U.S. history they wasted within the articles of impeachment? Because they knew that the 17 deliberate false statements within the, the, the FISA applications would come, to, come back to haunt them. And that's just... That's just the beginning. Anyway, we can go down that road, and I'll spend forever on that. They set up and framed Trump. He fought back. You have John Durham. You have William Barr now. He's going after Comey and Strzok and McCabe and Clapper. Now, I'll say this about Mitt Romney. He's a fighter. He does his thing. I don't know what he's... He, basically, he wants to run in 2024, so he's a, he's a very political creature... He's a political animal in a different sense from Bernie. Why am I harping on Bernie Sanders? Because the contrast between Trump and Bernie Sanders couldn't be, it's like night and day. Trump goes after Mitt Romney. Immediately, immediately. If Trump, if, if, if this happened to Bernie Sanders, Bernie wouldn't, wouldn't say anything. He didn't, doesn't want to offend anyone. I have enough of your emails. Uh, he never said he was cheated in 2016 promoted the same myth that said he, Jill Stein, and Trump were part of a Russian plot. But the second, the second that Mitt Romney votes to convict Trump of nothing, hours later, okay, or hours later, you know, he then, you know, counterpunch fights back, calls Mitt Romney a, a, a Democratic operative, That is actually more accurate than, than, than Clinton trying to disparage 
uh, Tulsi Gabbard, who is a great candidate. Tulsi Gabbard should have gotten a lot, a lot more love from Democrats. She's a great candidate. She has a great foreign policy. Maybe some of the things now I'm more conservative on, I disagree with her on, but she's a great candidate. She fights. Now she has a $50 million lawsuit against Clinton. Defamation. But anyway, Tulsi Gabbard fights. Mitt Romney fights for himself. He wants to run again in 2024. <clears throat> I have no clue. He thinks that there's a whole bunch of voters who will vote for him because he's he put his Irish he you know play, he put his Irish setter on on the roof rack of his car and uh, and drove like 30 hours. The poor dog was like you know got sick. It was horrible. But he has nice coiffed hair. And he's a you know good. He drinks milk. He's a very very good person. Um, yeah, right. And he's the anti-Trump, but 90, Trump has 94% approval within the Republican Party. But Trump fights. So now he's calling Mitt Romney a Democratic operative. He's here. The tweet is hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Well, first of all, let's, okay, Mitt, okay Trump actually endorsed Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney has announced he is running for the Senate. This was in uh, February 19th, 2018. Mitt Romney has announced he is running for the Senate from the wonderful state of Utah. He will make a great senator and worthy successor to Orrin Hatch and has my full support and endorsement. Okay. Pretty good of Trump, right? Nice of Trump. Then you have CNN. Uh, December 12, 2016, Romney confirms he's not Trump's pick for Secretary of State. Quote, it was an honor to have been considered for Secretary of State of our great country. My discussions with President-elect Trump have been both enjoyable and enlightening. I have very high hopes that the new administration will lead the nation to greater strength, prosperity, and peace. Okay. So he wanted to be Trump's Secretary of State, and Trump um, did him a favor, did him a solid, and endorsed him. All right. Tr uh, Romney then returns the favor by trying to convict and remove <laughs> removing the president on one of the articles of sham impeachment. All right. Now you have the Hill. Trump tweets video that claims Romney is a Democratic secret operative. <laughs> and it's a hilarious video, and I'd play it. But there's music, and then there'll be a copyright issue. It's big, all this Michigas, uh, all this problem. So I'm just, it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. But it's an example of Trump fighting. So slick, slippery, stealthy Mitt Romney had us fooled. Posing as a Republican, he tried to infiltrate Trump's administration as Secretary of State. Now his cover is blown. The, the video cites news reports that, <laughs> that allegedly out Romney as a Democratic secret operative. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. So they, people don't understand. So he, of course, the Senate acquitted Trump because there was nothing. He did nothing wrong. Nothing, nothing wrong. Biden is, Amy Klobuchar is more electable than Biden. Um, Biden's, both of them, Hunter, should have been investigated for bizarre conflicts of interest and forcing out a prosecutor looking into Hunter's, uh, the corporation funneling three, over what, 3.4 million to him? But the notion that Trump wanted to go after his direct political rival is completely shattered. Completely non-existent anymore. It, it doesn't exist. Iowa showed that Biden is not electable. I told you Biden was unelectable. I told you none of them were electable. Now, Mayor Pete's a good candidate, but if you listen to him, he is a carbon copy of President Obama. Pete Buttigieg is a carbon copy in Every, everything he says, you, you, if you take President Obama's speeches, and because I, I listened to his um, victory speech in Iowa, <laughs> look, if Bernie Sanders was serious about fighting, he should have just said, I'm going to have my own victory speech. Oh, yeah? Uh, we won, everyone. I had an internal polling. Then Buttigieg said, well, his internal, internal polling said that he won. Well, that's not true. The whole thing, the app was there for plausible deniability. It's not that difficult. It, this is not like conspiratorial. Look, if if your husband comes home with lipstick on his collar 
and his phone is um, getting text message and messages in the middle of the night, and you read the text messages, and it talks about how wonderful the night was with your husband. And then there's lipstick. Do you know if your husband has... Uh, do, do you know 100? Were you there? No, you put two and two together. You know, if your husband then says, oh, I bet you think the wor- the earth is flat, huh? Oh, yeah, well, did we stage the moon landing, honey? No, this was nothing. This was lipstick. It, it, it. And then he gives you the Russians. The Russians did it. Are you going to believe it? No, no. The app was not there to tabulate votes. That's absurd. The app was there for plausible deniability. Just like when they factory reset they, they, with the phones with Strzok and Lisa Page. Oh, it was a factory reset. Oh, my goodness. There was a glitch. Oh, my goodness. Whatever. It's all nonsense. Media all okay. Media has zero suspicion for, for Democrats. So if money flows from Uranium One officials and the Clinton Foundation, then President Obama doesn't veto the sale of 20% of U.S. uranium capacity. There's nothing there. You can't prove anything. You can't prove anything. It never happened. You can't prove anything. It never happened. Don't even think of prove, uh, saying anything without direct evidence. Of, uh, Trump has the, somebody purchased the dossier, which is a, 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 like basically uh, a, just papers full of gossip, nonsense. Somebody scribbled some, you know, gossip and hearsay. Up, oh, we have to investigate. Have to, uh, special counsel, special counsel, special counsel. Oh my God, the Constitution. There's no, but there's no plausible deniability. They don't allow Trump plausible deniability. They don't allow Trump. They don't give Trump the ability to say what. Um, I had, I didn't work with Russia, there's no evidence, and Clinton purchased that dossier. No. And it's not even, at that point, it's not plausible deniability. At that point, it's just you're being set up and framed. The issue with withholding military assistance, they got the, the aid. The, the, the assistance was lethal aid, and President Obama did not give the lethal aid to Ukraine. It was Trump. President Zelensky stated there was no pressure. President Poroshenko, his predecessor, stated there was no pressure. Um, the Bidens deserve to be investigated because you don't engage in corrupt activity. You don't force out a prosecutor of another country by saying, if I'm leaving in six hours, you will not get a billion in loan guarantees un- unless a prosecutor is fired. Kenneth Vogel of the New York Times, John Solomon of The Hill. Remember when uh, the Daily Beast and others were like, yeah, you know, John Solomon's, his reporting is being looked at. Well, his reporting was pristine. John Solomon's a great journalist. So is Kenneth Vogel. Great journal, both great journalists. They've reported on the conflicts of interest and possible corruption of the Bidens. So there's actual like that that is shady. So that you can't investigate that, but you can investigate Trump based on a dossier or a Comey memo. Are you kidding me? But see again, the whole notion that Biden is even you know, that Biden is even electable is now nonsense. Of course he's not. He he got nothing in Iowa. Amy Klobuchar got almost as many votes. Getting back to Iowa, Bernie Sanders doesn't fight. He's part of the charade. This is an elaborate charade and hoax and theatrical performance. This is a theatrical performance. This is, if you're watching a play, do you say, hey, you know, Romeo doesn't really love Juliet. Romeo's married. He he's he works as a mechanic. He's doing this because he loves acting. He's not even real. He's not. No, you don't say that. Everyone's like, shh, be quiet. What's wrong with you? You're, you're you know you're nuts. Do you watch like Marvel? You know, do you watch like you know movies and you just say, and that's not true. This is special effects. Iron Man is not really. It's no. You just suspend belief. And you enjoy the show. Why are people taking Iowa seriously and the Democratic Party seriously? They already cheated. They already said DNC fraud uh, lawsuit. Jared Beck, Elizabeth Beck, and Nico House will live forever. The DNC lawyers said they can pick their, their, their a candidate in back rooms. They already said it. So it's like, 
this is a charade. I said, oh, the app. It was an app. It just happened. It was just a coincidence. The app was um, created by, by former Clinton campaign people. I mean, you can't prove anything. At what point do you say, okay, they're at it again? <laughs> you already read, have you read the DNC emails? Read them. They're all they're just basically like, let's, you know, we're going to conspire against Bernie Sanders, make sure he doesn't win. Let's paint him as an atheist. Let's do this. Let's do that. Give Clinton debate questions. Make sure that, you know, a super delegate's all lining up to Clinton as she's being investigated by a completely autonomous James Comey. I was naive back then, thinking the FBI was autonomous and thinking the Democratic Party wanted to win. But I learned my lesson. And Trump is a great president. President Trump is objectively, objectively a very good president. When you look at what he's doing going after people like Comey and reversing U.S. foreign policy and being the first president to step foot in North Korea and presiding over an economy where there's record low black and Latino unemployment, record low unemployment nationally, and the unemployment rate for Hispanic and Latino men is below the national average. You have 5 million people lifted out of poverty. When you look at all of that, he's a great president. He's a great president. But I learned my lesson. And it's actually great being a Trump supporter. Because now... It's like, you know what? It's like in the early days of punk rock, people didn't really, it wasn't mainstream at all. But now you're getting a lot of people saying, you know what? Trump is a good president. You know what? Yeah, I'm voting Trump. So what? And then the you know liberals and people on the left, even they're saying, oh my God, look what happened in Iowa. Like they're more upset at what take, what's taking place in Iowa than they are at Trump now, which is great. Which is great. But getting back to Bernie and Trump and Romney, Trump goes after Romney, immediately sticks up for himself, defends himself. Romney does his own thing, sticks up for himself in his own way, whatever. Like, I don't, I don't actually dislike Romney. He's, he, he actually represents for his voters or himself or whatever it is that he wants. He wants to run again, fine. He's try, he wants to run again in 2024. All right, fine. Who does Bernie represent? Does Bernie stick up for himself? Does Bernie stick up for his voters? Well, how come Mayor Pete declared victory? Why didn't Bernie Sanders declare victory? Oh, he's a nicer person. Who cares about that? He he, what, he could have gotten a victory speech. Oh, I'm, it would have been amazing. That would have been like 10,000. He should have won Iowa by a landslide. Of course he was cheated. I said for three years, the past since the day he was cheated then, since the, so sorry, since, well, for around three years, I've been saying that he's going to be cheated again. He was. Why doesn't he at least say, hey, you're cheating me again? Why doesn't he allude to being upset? Or, or like, why doesn't he say something? My God almighty, say something. I'm not even, I, I'm, I'm voting Trump. But do you ever wonder why he doesn't say anything? Do you ever wonder maybe he's part of this elaborate charade? Because, you know, Mayor Pete, he declared victory without knowing the results. Yeah, right. The DNC told him. That's why he declared victory. Mitt Romney voted to convict Trump after that Trump, and this is like they say Trump, oh, he's so mean. No, he was very good to Romney. He talked to him about being Secretary of State. He endorsed Romney in Utah. And Romney, you know, basically stabs him in the back. Okay, he, he did what was good for him. It not, I'm not saying that it's good to be this way, but in politics, this is like a cutthroat type of endeavor. Bernie Sanders is going into a nuclear confrontation with a Swiss Army knife. And he's, he's always been doing that. Now, in 2016, he could have won. If it was a fair primary, he would have he would have won. He, I was writing about Bernie Sanders in the Hill, the Huffington Post, and the Salon. My writing went viral, and I was drawing a clear line between Bernie and a criminal, a person who 
Had anyone else done what she did with transferring illegally transferring top-secret intelligence onto servers outside of the United States government's special access program intelligence? You can't even get that out of the U.S. government. This is so... Everyone knows this. But they don't even... See, again, they don't want to think about it. So with... So the Bernie Sanders world... Bernie Sanders in 2016 is, was, is, is Tulsi Gabbard of 2020. But now Bernie's changed. He's no longer that same person. There is zero crossover appeal between Bernie Sanders and conservatives. There used to be. That's why he was so strong. Now they're getting Buttigieg, Pete Buttigieg. His whole thing is, you know what? If you're a Republican, please vote for me. Which I guess makes sense. But again, it's the whole Mitt Romney thing. Also, if you listen to Pete Buttigieg, it's it's carbon copy of President Obama. He doesn't want to remove Americans from never-ending uh, conflict. Tulsi Gabbard does. Both are veterans, and I respect both their their service. But Tulsi Gabbard wants, and President Trump, and I thought Bernie Sanders, even though Bernie was like, "Oh, has to be an orderly withdrawal." When Trump, when President Trump removed Americans from a hot spot, okay, you know. The Democrats, oh my God, you're you know you're abandoning oh, no, no. all the horrendous atrocities never took place. Every everything Democrats say, like oh it's going to be a global recession, it never happens. He removed Americans there. Americans should never have been there in the beginning, in the first place. And instead of Bernie Sanders saying, you know what, he did a good thing, Trump. Bernie Sanders says, oh, you know, it's uh, it has to be orderly. The withdrawal has to, no, it ha- doesn't. We spent enough time, people have risked their lives and people have lost their lives, it's, it's enough. And then at the end of the day, the money spent, which is not even close to the lives, has nothing, the lives are infinitely more important, but you, we didn't spend enough money, we didn't spend enough, you, we haven't asked Americans to sacrifice enough, we have to stay there forever, forever? That's what Pete Buttigieg is, is basically saying. That's what Romney would, would say. That's what Clinton wants. She'll be the nominee. But they've managed to replace the passion and energy that Bernie Sanders has with a more, you know, uh, palatable message with Pete Buttigieg. All of it is to pave the way for Clinton. Okay? Pete Buttigieg doesn't have national name recognition. Clinton does. Bernie Sanders does, but he doesn't fight for himself. So he has no leverage. And people say, like, the left is very interesting. They're going after, the, they're so, they say that Trump is, like, some mean and, and belligerent. They're, they're the most vile, disgusting, nauseating, insidious, like, political side. You have people calling uh, Mayor Pete, like, you know, rat this, rat boy. For what? Then you have people going after Rush Limbaugh. He said this. Well, what did Clinton say? You want to go and talk about what Clinton said? Well, he he advocated, you know, uh, you know, cutting uh, assistance to, to poor people. Okay. And so so what does that mean? He advocated cutting medical assistance. So the poor guy is, is God bless him. God bless Rush Limbaugh. He's now he's suffering his stage uh, what for cancer. I it's horrible. God bless him. And his family. Okay? You didn't like his voice. You didn't like his opinions or viewpoints. But you should see how the left treats it now. But but they treats him. But they wouldn't use the same logic if you voted for Clinton. Does that mean you should perish in the same manner as and, and have you know experience the same fate as people who've lost their lives in Clinton's never ending counterinsurgency conflicts that she voted for and pushed for around, you know, around the world? Does that mean that you should have the same fate? The Democrats are the most vile and nasty, and oh my goodness, and social media is like run by the most vile people. Trump, they say that, oh, he's, you know, every tweet is menacing. No, 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 no. They're, the left is, they're the ones who are completely unhinged. Trump just does his thing. He just has a brash New York billionaire personality. That's it. It's really not... The same liberals in Hollywood and the same people who watch The Apprentice 
Like how many how many people with the how many how many people on Rose Twitter and Rose Icon, the socialists and the anarchists? How many people watch The Apprentice? Okay, how many of those people watch The Apprentice with Trump on them? Yeah, a lot of those people. How many Democrats you think watch The Apprentice? How many Democrats you think um, tuned in for an interview when Trump was on Letterman or whatever? How about most of them? Now they pretend that they're like fighting against, and they do so in the most vile, nasty, disgusting manner. And you see that with the way they're treating Rush Limbaugh now. They have no business going after him and saying, oh, he deserves this, you do that. That's disgusting. Because then they wouldn't do that to themselves. Mass incarceration under the Clintons. You voted for Clinton, so does that mean you should be incarcerated for 10 years or, you know, because of possession of marijuana or whatever? So, I mean, that logic that they have on the left is like Ill, completely illogical, completely irrational. It just, you want to spew as, as much venom as they can because they just crave political power. That's it. That's why you have people on the left. That's why you have people on the left who don't speak to family members, who don't speak to friends. Their friendships will never be the same. It's not the Trump supporter who did it. It's, it's the person, on, it's the unhinged or scorned person on the left. I have friendships that'll never be the same again. Not my fault. I didn't do anything. I voted for Trump. There's record low unemployment. Okay, first president to step foot in North Korea. Five million people lifted out of poverty. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He tweets. Okay. He, he, notice how they're not saying, oh, you know, he said both sides because that was a lie too. He never said the Tiki Torch people were fine people. And he never meant that. He never alluded to that because he didn't need to. This whole nonsense of, uh, oh, you know, the, the dog whistle. That was the 3 a.m. ad that Clinton used. You want to go back in time? Let's go back in time. You want to talk about subliminals? Let's talk about subliminals. Clinton used that against President Obama. Or you want to talk about the birther myth that Trump spread? That was bad. I admit that. That's wrong. Guess who was one of the originators? It was Clinton. Even David Plouffe. Go look it up. It's in The Guardian. Called it the most shameful, offensive fear-mongering of either side, meaning McCain or Trump or Republicans or, or Democrats. The most shameful, offensive fear-mongering when Clinton's campaign spread a photo of, of President Obama, then candidate Obama in African attire. That was Clinton's campaign, but Democrats give themselves a free pass. Look at Ralph Northam. We can go on forever. We can go on forever. Okay. Give me your thoughts below. Trump going after Mitt Romney is a great thing. Not because I dislike Mitt, Mitt Romney. Because it shows that he's sticking up for himself. It shows that you can't do anything nasty to Trump and get away with it. But Bernie Sanders, not only can you do nasty things and not only can you cheat him, but he won't say anything. He won't stick up for himself or his voters. And I don't understand why. Look, the only rationale is that you're trying to keep, you're not trying, you're trying to reach the, the neoliberals or the liberals or the Clinton voters. They have the utmost contempt for Bernie and they always will. So it doesn't matter. The only thing they understand is leverage and political influence. And if Bernie had leveraged his, whatever he had in 2016 and said, if you cheat me again, you will never win an election, ever, because, oh, I'm taking all my voters. And you can, you know, kiss it where the sun don't shine, lady. But he never said that. He said, I had enough of your emails. Oh, it's so bad what the Russians did. Uh, will you love me? Will you, will you not cheat me again? And then, you know, then the question is, well, is he part of the whole thing? Anyway, give me your thoughts below. I can go on forever. Give me your thoughts below. Check out H.A. Goodman's other channel. And I will be doing a live stream, of course, this evening at around 10, 1030. Um, I might be doing a live stream in a couple of hours. So check this channel. Give me your thoughts. Thank you so very, very much. And if you want to support my voice long term, my Patreon link is below in the pinned comment. Thank you.